Hello everyone and welcome back to another painting tutorial with Oscar Lars Painting Studio. One of our patrons asked recently how I painted the cloaks for my Chaos Warriors. So we thought it would be a good idea to do a tutorial on how to paint cloaks. For the color scheme for this video, we're gonna do the same that I used for my Chaos Warriors, but you can choose any color scheme that you would like to use for yours. We hope you're gonna enjoy this tutorial. Let's begin. The palette we're using for the cloak is Rhinox Hide, Nagaroth Knight, Corn Red, Tuscor Fur, Cadium Flush, as well as Athonian Camo Shade. For the dust, we'll be using Carrick Stone and Gohoroth Brown. The brushes I will be using today are size 2 and size 00 from Redgrass Games. The first step is to darken and desaturate the corn red with the Nagaroth Knight and Rhinox Hide. I do so by mixing in a bit of each with the corn red until I'm satisfied. I use this mix to base coat the entire cloak. Make sure you get the paint into the hairs of the fur to eliminate all black closes to it. Do two thin coats here to make sure you keep the layers clean. The second step is to apply a layer of pure corn red on all of the areas the light would naturally hit. By placing the model flat on the table with the light hitting from above, you'll be able to see where those areas are pretty easily. We don't worry about small recesses yet, but only the major blocks of shadow. Alright, now we have applied the solid layers of corn red onto the areas where the light would hit. But I also place a bit in the shadow areas. Shadow areas are never just one flat color, but a bunch of variation in tones. In this video, we won't go over all of what that entails, but adding a bit of brightness in the center or on a fold will help to give some more dimension to those areas, making them a little bit more interesting. I'm also feathering some of the bottom parts where the light would bounce around a bit more naturally. The third step is to add some Tusker fur to the corn red. The corn red is a base color as well as being red, which is a naturally dominant color. So you'd need to add quite a bit of tusk or fur to make a small difference to the corn red. I now apply a layer of the brightened corn red on top of the previous layer. And as usual, we save a bit of the underlaying corn red making this layer smaller towards the shadow parts of the cloak. This will make for a nice blended transition. Thank you. 
The fourth step is to add in more Tusker fur to the previous mix and bring out the highlights. This is the time that I focus more on the micro shadows and smaller folds as well as the edge highlights. Now as you can see we have defined the structure of the cloak and are going to move on to highlighting edges, doing some details and give some textures. This means we're going to change the brush to the double zero. The next step is to bring out the highlights of the cloak with pure tusk or fur. This I focus mostly on the edges and sharper folds, but it's also a good way to define certain places on the cloak. I make sure to highlight all of the tears and holes in it. I also add in thin streaks in various directions on the cloak as I begin to texture the fabric. These lines should pass from the light part of the cloak to the shadow areas. This helps to link the two together. The next step is to add more edge highlights and textures by mixing in some cadmium flesh tone into the tusk or fur. Now you can stop right here, but if you're like me and like to take it one step further, we can add even more cadmium flesh tone to the mix and do one final sweep around the entire cloak, hitting critical surfaces that could use a bit more light to define everything completely. Lastly, we take the Athonian camo shade and glaze the shadow areas with a bit of drab green. This helps to give these areas a little bit more interest. We are now going to weather the bottom of the cloak by giving it some mud and dust color. This helps to give the cloak some history that the sculpt is already offering by having wear and tear. The first step is to add some Gohoroth brown through the airbrush. This is applied mostly at the bottom portion of the cloak. The second step is to add Carrick stone a bit further down towards the very very bottom of the cloak. And that's it! I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I want to thank all of our patrons, Benjamin Winans, Carl Martin, Jason D. Fluffer, Jason Sellen, John Gammon, Jonathan Edlund, Joseph Larson, Mark Alexander, Mitzi, Matt Rutowski, Mike Elkins, Seamus, Stormcrutch, and Warhammer OK. If you want to contribute to these tutorials so that we can continue to improve them, follow the link below to our Patreon page. If you want to pick up some official Oscar Lars Painting Studio merchandise, follow the link to our shop where you can find dice, stickers, and eco-friendly screen-printed shirts. We love hearing from you, so share with us if you like the content, what you're working on, and if you have any wishes for future tutorials. I am trying to read and respond to everyone, but if I miss your comment, it's very much unintentional. Editing for this video was done by the amazing Martin Kramer, Intro animation was done by Robbie Shulstone. The painting handle and model used is from Games Workshop. The brushes and wet palette are from Redgrass Games. You can find links to their products at oscarlars.com shop. Thank you so much for watching, commenting and liking this video. See you soon and happy painting!